Good evening, everyone. I'm Apostle T.B. Walker. Certainly glad to have you here with us today on our Thursday evening Bible study. We're in the Word today, as we are always in the Word, for the purpose of really of looking at life application. Our purpose of exploring the Word is that so that we'll be able to see how God is able to use now this uh, ancient Word to be able to apply to our lives, to, uh, to propel us into the path and direction that He has for us. I'm certainly glad to have you here. Certainly glad that uh, you are going to share. Make sure that you press that share button because we want to make sure that we share this revelation with our friends and with our family and those that we care about. Listen, I just believe that God is doing an awesome, wonderful thing today. And we're going to be taking off on what we, we started last week. We were talking about Zechariah last week, uh, chapter number three, and we were looking at verses one and two. We were dealing with this character by the name of Joshua. Well, we're going to look at uh, what God is doing with this character now who is standing before him in what looks like a judicial scene. Uh, we're going to be looking today in, in the book of uh, Zechariah chapter three, verses four through five. We're going to look at the word and then we're going to see what the word has to say to us today. Let's take a look at this once again, that's Zechariah three, starting in verse number four, ending in verse number five. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, remove the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure vestments. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord was standing by. Hi, Mom. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just thank you for this word. We bless you now for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's take a look at the study. The angel uh, of the Lord who was standing by said to them, listen, remove the filthy garments from him. And then he says, behold, I've taken away your iniquity uh, from you, and I'm going to clothe you with pure vestments, with rich vestments, with uh, pure vestments. So he says now, take away his garments. Now, understand this. Joshua is standing before the Lord, and we recognize that looking at the last few verses, that his garments are filthy. He is the high priest. He is the ordained priest to go before the Lord, to minister before the Lord, and he represents the land. He represents the priesthood. He represents the people. He represents Israel. And Satan, is, who is an accuser of the brethren, uh, is standing here in what he believes is a really strong position. He's standing here with Joshua as a worshiper of God and as a priest serving in the capacity of a priest. And he's saying, this is how he's serving you. The, in, in this capacity, we are witness here of these filthy garments. And so now as we begin to look here at the angel of the Lord, who is... You know, there is not clear, all, you know, through interpretation of who this angel is, whether he is a, a, a true angel that is given a, a particular task by God, or if this angel is the angel of the Lord, is the embodiment of Christ, is this the great mediator who will come down later through the generations and die for the sins of, of all the world and those who receive him. But, but here's what's being spoken here. Uh, and we know this is by God. He says, Take away the filthy garments from him. Now, when you look at the word that's used in this take away, he's actually saying take, uh, you know, from upon him these filthy garments. D and literally, he's saying remove this burden and this weight from him. You know, when he looks at this, this isn't a stripping down of Joshua in anger and embarrassment, you know, stripping him down so that he will be shamed and, and you know, his nakedness will be recognized. No, this is the Lord coming saying he's bearing heavy, this a burden that's too heavy for him. You know, the reality is that Joshua isn't capable of bearing the burden of, of his own sin, let alone bear the burdens of the sins of the people, the sins of all of Israel, to get these garments off of him. Joshua is operating as a high priest, and Satan is accusing him and is standing on what he's sure is, you know, a, a really good place. And listen, I want to make sure before I go for, forward that, you know, you recognize that this is interactive. If you got a comment, you got a question that you want to ask, if there's something you want to add that maybe I, I may have missed, listen, put it in the comments. And we, I want to make sure that we are able to answer those in real time and you, we can have a conversation if necessary here. So, but let's take a look at this. Satan really feels good. He feels like he's really on, on really solid ground. And the truth of the matter is this. Joshua is guilty 
of standing before God in filthy garments. It's real. The guilt is there. And when you understand how the high priest is supposed to operate, the high priest garments cannot, they're, they're supposed to be pristine. They, you know, according to the Jewish canon, they're supposed to be pure, white. They're not supposed to have a blemish. That's according to the canon. And so, you know, when they were blemished in any way, they did not wash them. They didn't whiten them in any way. They, they didn't come back and try to scrub out the stains. They got rid of them. They had to now put on new garments. So there was no order given uh, to wash the garments. You know, go take those clothes off and, and, and fix them. No, they were beyond repair. And that's true. And Satan comes and he looks and says, I know the word. I know what's said. The, the garments are beyond repair. And he's actually worshiping and, and, and serving as a priest. This is the condition of your people. This is the condition of the priesthood. They are serving you with these filthy garments. And God now, and, 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 and the truth of the matter is, Satan is looking and saying, how can you rectify this? You must bring judgment. The truth of the matter is, Satan is sure that he has them. And just as sure as Satan is about the church today. You know, when he looks, when, when you look around at certain areas in the church and certain things that you're seeing on social media that might flip you out and people are looking and saying, oh man, the ship is going down. You know what I mean? And, and you know, Satan looks like he's winning and, and people are pulling their hair out because they're wondering, you know, you're giving him all this ammunition, you know, everything that is needed to try to tear down the church. You know, certain people in the church are giving them, you know, the, the, the bullets. You know, so the reality is it's not just about Satan wants to paint town red with your name. You're giving him the paint. So when you when you look at this, people are pulling their hair out. And just like Satan is sure, so, so is he sure today. But you know what? God has a remedy. You know, the Lord was, you know, Satan is looking and saying, how are you going to fix this? With your righteousness, there's no way to fix this. And the Lord says, take off the filthy garments. That's the fix. He simply fixed it by cleansing Joshua. And that's the first thing. And then removing the iniquity away from him. This, listen, when he says filthy garments, we're talking about, uh, uh, in representation, the most vile of characters. You know, we're, we're talking about a nature that is just completely in opposition to God. You know, the, the, the Lord being pure, filth, not just dirt. But when you look at this, this is filth. This is something that appears that it cannot be dealt with. And here's what God is saying. Listen, you don't have to deal with it. First of all, Satan doesn't have to deal with it. But here's what God comes and does. He says, Joshua is not going to have to deal with this. I'm going to fix this by simply removing it. But what, what a wonderful power here. And, and, and that Satan, I'm sure, never thought that from a judicial standpoint that, that, that this would ever possibly happen. Now, here's what happens. There's a reality here that Satan is not aware of. That, but there's a reality that he is aware of, that sin has to be dealt with, that he knows how God works. He knows the reality of holiness, that sin cannot just go undealt with. So by removing it, this, you know, he, Satan realizes like, well, what are you talking about? Like removing it. And, and so when you begin to look at this, the interesting thing is that Satan wants God to remove the man. Satan wants God to take away the power from the man. Satan wants the man to be stripped down. This is the man who is walking in the likeness and the image of God. And yet God takes away the sin, but never touches the man. He takes away the sin, but he doesn't remove the power. He takes away the sin, but he doesn't take away the priesthood. No, he says, look, behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you. Now, when you look at that, what a wonderful thing. You know, the Lord says, but stop, Joshua. Look, behold. You know, when you see this prefix that's there, when he, when he says behold, before he's looking here, he's now turning Joshua's attention. And I want you to begin to really understand that, that, that where God is turning the attention of the priest today. I want you to see what I've done in you. Listen, the accuser is all around. Listen, I mean, you can see it on YouTube. You can see it on Facebook. You can see it on CNN. You can see it all over. But God is saying, no, no, no. I need you to understand something. Everybody's rallying so that, I, that I'll tear this thing down. 
They're just hoping that there'll be a huge wrecking ball that, that will just be to tear the church apart. Absolutely not. On legal grounds, there's no legal ground to destroy the church. For the Lord said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. He says, Joshua, don't put your attention on the enemy. Don't put your attention on Satan. Don't look at Satan. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at yourself. He says, behold, I have taken your iniquity away. You can't really stand your ground unless you're able to truly look at yourself. Unless you understand what God has done in you. Unless you understand what God has done for you. The, the reality is that what have, could have happened to you did not happen. Because the Lord decreed that it would not happen. So when you look at this, he says, look, I've taken your iniquity away. What does that mean? You actually sinned. You did it. Satan was right. Satan was right about your flesh. Satan was right. Yeah, Satan was right about your nature. Satan was right. Satan was right about what you did. But Satan was not right about who you are. Because who you are is in a place that Satan can't see. But I want you now to see who you now are. Listen, this place of judgment here was meant to show off God's power. That the truth be told, God judged the sin. He said, listen, I want you to see, I've taken your iniquity away. Now, what does that do? That doesn't signify any atonement for sin. No, not at all. That doesn't mean that, listen, the transgression has been dealt with. No, this doesn't mean that it's removed out of the sight of justice, that it's not going to be dealt with. He simply says, you don't have to deal with it anymore. You're not going to deal with it. I'm going to take it out of your sight, Joshua. Now, understand something. Sin has got to be dealt with. And you know what the wonderful thing is? The same one who's talking to him right now is the same one who's going to deal with that sin. He's going to bear these he's going to bear this iniquity himself. The reality is that Satan is looking and saying, but you can't do that. That's not you. That's not the way you work. He says, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to deal with this sin. I'm simply saying the one you want to deal with it is not going to deal with it. You're hoping Joshua is going to spend his whole ministry in guilt, right? You're hoping that Joshua is going to constantly look at himself through a lens that you've created for him, right? You're hoping that Joshua will always have his head down because he just hasn't met the mark. But I want Joshua to see what I've already done before he started his new life, before he started his new ministry. Then listen, I was obviously for him in filthy garments. That the reality is that we didn't just start this thing. I pardoned him and knew he what he did. So the reality is that God is not calling us to rejoice over the fact that we got over. God is calling us to rejoice over the fact he saw it, but saw something better. That's the beauty here in Joshua that, that Satan couldn't see. Satan could see the sin that God could see. Satan simply couldn't see the end that God could see. That's, that's the dramatic difference. That's why the Lord says, I alone. Know the thoughts I think toward you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil. To give you a, a created, a divinely created end that Satan doesn't know about. This is all Satan can see. And listen, I want you to understand something. The attack that's going on against the people of God, this is all they can see. They, they, they see weakness. They, they, they see wishy-washy. They see people who are just about money. They, they, they see power tripping. But the truth of the matter is that God is doing a tremendous washing work. And, and guess what? There's a reason why there's some people that are not expelled. There's a reason why, listen, they ought to be out of here. They ought to be kicked out. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, there's some people God's washing right now. There's some garments that, 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 you know, listen, go before them and you can say, I can point at the things you did. You actually did that. And God is like, well, listen, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to fix that. And you're like, yeah, yeah, now's the time. That, yeah, you're going you, you to get your comeuppance. And God is like, I'm going to fix that by removing it. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to tell him to look at himself. I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to tell her to look at herself. So when you begin to look at this, Christ was already saying, oh, I've already dealt with it. I just want to make sure that Joshua doesn't operate in any guilt and try to bear something he cannot bear. And the, 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 the garment isn't removed by him. 
The garment isn't even requested to be removed by him. Joshua is powerless. Matter of fact, you know what's so interesting here? Joshua is sitting there, but you know, he's not aware of how dirty his garments are. Joshua's not a fool here. Joshua's a high priest. So the reality is, this Joshua is a man of integrity. Joshua is unaware that he's walking around as a rule breaker. It is God who's now coming. You know, when you look at this narrative, when you understand the narrative of the of Malachi, when you understand the narrative of the the, the post exilic prophets, and the, you know you don't see the sins of the the fathers, you don't see idolatry, you know you see some relationship sins, you know you see some 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 sins in certain areas, but you don't see some of the great great horrendous sins that you saw uh, in the, in the other portions of the Old Testament. You know what you see are these things where they everybody's astonished where they say, wait a minute, how have we robbed you? What, what do you mean? But but what do you what do you mean we say this and, and you say that? They, they were astonished because they were going through the motions. And that's what God was coming against. He was coming against a time where the people were thinking they were righteous because they weren't doing that or they weren't doing that overt thing. But they didn't realize that their worship had just been willy-nilly, that their worship had been humdrum, that they were just going through the motions. So when you begin to look at this, God was shaking up a group of people that had a dynamic work to do, that were doing the work, but simply plodding and going through the motions. God was not supreme in their life. He was not, this This, this was not a, a work of joy in their life, in their life. They were not looking to increase. They were not looking to take the land. They were just biding their time and until the Lord cracked the sky. They were just biding their time until the Messiah would someday come and get them out of their misery. They did not know what an exciting time they were living in and that they were in the season of restoration where God was going to restore the glory. The, the, the glory that had been, that seemed as if it had been gone forever. And one of the first things that God had to do was deal with the head down. I need to deal with the high priest. Because as priests go, so do the people. I need to make sure the priests are walking in power and not walking in guilt and walking in shame. And the Lord says, I've got a promise for you. I'm going to clothe you with pure vestments. This is a promise of righteousness. But this is God shocking, I'm sure, everybody by saying to Joshua, you're not getting fired. And I want you to know, there's some people right now who've sat themselves down. They've, they've, they've fired themselves, you know. There's some things you do and you walk away and, you know, you walk into the office with your resignation in hand. Because you already know. You know, you do that. You out of here. You know, you do that. You might as well go ahead and, and go to HR and not even report in. Just bring a box and just to bring your stuff. Because you know you're not coming to the meeting. And yet, here God comes. Like the, you know, like he's dealing with the prodigal son. You know, he's got all these garments waiting. And there's new robes and these new slippers and all these things for this person who has been eating with the hogs. Who is filthy. And yet, here is God's mindset. I am not removing you from service. I'm preparing you to serve right. I want you to get that. I want you to understand what God is doing right now because that's what he's changing so many things and we're, we're wondering what's going on and God is saying, I'm preparing you to serve me right. Every struggle, every, every fire that you've gone through, all the upheaval that you're seeing, things that you're seeing in the world, all of these things are getting you ready and preparing you for the office that I've given you. I'm not removing you from the office. But I want to remove this, this, this burden from you because you weren't ordained to bear it. You can't bear it. Your name is Joshua. That, that's the same name that we'll find later is Yeshua. But you're not that Yeshua. You're just that Joshua. You're the high priest, but you can't bear the people this way. And listen, there's so many people that are trying to bear the people and not realize that the job is to shift the burden from yourself to God. He's the only one that can bear it. Try to bear your ministry and not realize that you're supposed to operate your ministry and to walk in your ministry and to live your ministry. But the bearing of this is a shifting that you got to give to God. He's the only one that can remove the stains that come from failure. And so when you begin to look at this, God was trying to let Joshua know, you can't fail. How powerful is that? That God was telling Israel, you, you can't fail because I'm with you. And listen, you can't be wrong because I'm dressing you. 
Listen, you're going, your your preparation is sure because I'm dressing you for the atmosphere you're going to. I'm dressing you for the environment that I uh, that I'm causing you to operate in. So the reality is that what God is doing right now is stripping off garments. And you know what's so weird is that if you don't know that it's dirty. You can actually fight somebody holding on to a dirty garment, and you just can't see the stain. You know, you're not aware. You're like, oh, I like that one. There's nothing wrong with that. And they're like, this is dirty. I mean, I've got something better for you. I've got something new. You don't even realize you've been walking around with holes because you can't see it in the back. There's areas you can't see. There's coffee stains. There, you know, there's things that you've bumped up in, against, and you're not as clean as you think you are. And so it is God now who comes even to the high priest and says, you got to let me dress you. Listen, you gotta, you got to hear me when I tell you, you have iniquity. You Listen, don't get uh, self-righteous and, and forget that though you're a high priest, you're not higher than me. I see you, and I'm telling you, I want to do something new in you. I want to do something dynamic in you. I want to change you. I want to rearrange your ministry. I want to rearrange your life. I want to change how you operate. I'm going to make it so that you'll please me because I'm going to dress you myself. And so, when you begin to look at this, and I want you to check that out. I mean, and, and listen, if you've got any comments, don't hesitate. But, you know, I want you to look at verse number five. He says, now let them put a clean turban on his head. And they did it. They put a clean turban on his head and, and clothed them with garments, and the angel of the Lord was standing by. Now, this was the garment of the high priest. And, you know, this is one that Joshua probably had on his head already. And God is, you know, what, what a sight where I'm sure this dethroning is what Satan was expecting. I'm sure there are people right now that are so out of line. They're so out of line. And then, you know, and you, you look at it and you say, like, oh man, they're done. And God is like, I'm, uh -uh. I'm not doing a dethroning. I'm doing a rethroning today. I'm, I'm not going to do, do, do it, taking them down a peg. I'm actually doing a promotion preparation class today. That's exactly what God is doing here. Listen, I'm promising you this, and then he does it. I want you to know how instantly I'm going to give you new clothes, and then boom, he now becomes and says, I'm about to do it. Listen, he says, I'm, going to, I'm about to do this, and then he does it. This is a quick work that's about to happen in our time. I can promise you that that's what God is saying. And some things that you're going through right now, God is saying, listen, I just promised you I'm going to do it. In this vision, he tells Joshua, listen, I'm going to give you new clothes. Take those clothes off. Right? Take those clothes off. I'm going to give you new clothes. And then, boom, the new clothes are there. Why? Because they've already been prepared for this moment. Satan may have thought that he accused you and brought you to court. But God had already had your new clothes waiting before you ever came to court, before you were ever accused, before you were ever dragged before the court, before you were ever so-called embarrassed, you know, by what was going on that was uncovered and exposed. And here God is saying, I already had your covering. I already had clean clothes. I, I was going, I'm going to show you all. Listen, you can't walk in guilt and shame and stop. You can't allow guilt and shame to enter in and you just quit. And you just come to God with a resignation when he's coming and saying, I can fix that. That's not too much. Listen, I want you to rise and shine. I want you to wake up that God wants to put something new on your head. He wants to put something new around your mindset, something new in your brain. And so this thing that was foul that Joshua was, was dealing with, God says, I'm taking it off. And, and I'm going to, and, and the new one, because the inscription was the holiness to the Lord. You know, when he put this new one on, he's reestablishing holiness to the Lord. It's only God can do that. Listen, I want you to understand, no matter how much we want revival, revival only comes from God. The truth be told here that Joshua is not crazy. You know, Joshua would have would have wanted revival. Zechariah would have wanted revival. Everybody wanted revival. Do you understand that nobody can take the garments off but God? Nobody could, could set the time but God. Nobody could, could take the high priest and fix him but God. You know, so as we're looking and hoping and fixing and, and trying our best and coming up with all new ideas, you realize that we've got to get back to prayer because only God can fix. This is his church. This is Israel. And so God now begins to give a vision and say, hey, looks out of control. I got this. I am in control. And so when God commanded it, guess what happened? It happened. There were people, there were people already established to dress you. They were already there. Spectators, right? Maybe what you may have thought, ah, they, they, they can't wait to see my downfall. No, there's people that are part of the command that God is saying, they're just attending to see the new thing that's about to happen to you. You know, people, you paranoid, wondering, like, what are they gawking at? 
they are expecting something awesome. God's been talking well of you. You just don't recognize it because guilt and shame will cause you to think that. Will, will cause you to, uh, to think that the glory is diminished. And here is what God is doing. This was the restoration of the glory of the priesthood. I'm telling you now that we are in a time where we're going to see the restoration of the priesthood. We're going to see the glory. There are those that are living right now that may not see it. We may be uh, old and, and, and great, you know, when it happens. But I can tell you in our time, we're going to see God is bringing back the glory just as quickly as he spoke it in Zechariah. I'm telling you now, with the famine still going on, with all the things that were still going on, here's what God was talking about. The people were saying, we got to attend to our own business. we got to make sure we eat. We've got a lot of things going on. The world is in a, in a bad place. Listen, we don't have time to be dealing with this. Here's what God is saying. I'm restoring the glory. And I, I need you to be a part of that. And, and the completion of the temple was one part of that. That, that, that was, was one part of that glory. But the, the real part was that the Lord was talking about a glorious church that was coming. That was going to be realized when the real high priest came. The real Joshua. The real Yeshua. The one that we call Jesus. Identical name. This one would be able to bear the weight of the people. This one would not get God coming and saying, remove that burden from him. No, no, he would bear the whole burden and, and on the cross. And from that comes us. So when you look at this dynamic place that we're in right now, I want you to really, really understand how exciting it is to be born in this time right now. How, how, how wonderful it is to be a soldier in the army of the Lord right now. And to understand that God is doing a restoration work. Listen, I hope that you are part of that. I hope that you recognize that that's what God is really calling for, for us to really wake up and to be able to see. You know, Zechariah was getting a vision because he himself as a prophet, you know, could not get weary in well-doing. He himself as a prophet, as a man of God, had to hear and know what God is doing. And one of the things that was emboldening was not just what he was doing with, uh, you know, Joshua, but he was showing Zechariah this is what I'm doing with the whole nation. I'm not doing it with one man. I'm not doing it with a clan. I'm not doing it with a tribe. This is a nation. And a nation is going to be blessed. And there's a nation within a nation. This is not an American proclamation. I'm not pro proclaiming America is going to be blessed. But I'm, pro I'm proclaiming now that the nation within this nation that calls upon the name of the Lord, that group is going to be blessed beyond measure. Why? Because the glory of God's house is going to be revealed. And it's going to be revealed through us. So listen, I want you to understand what's happening here. I want you to understand that this is, the, you know, a thousand years ago and yet how relevant it is to where we are right now. Listen, let's get excited about what God is doing. We're at the end of our Bible study. It's 8 o'clock. I'm so glad that you were here uh, today. We're going to be back here again Sunday at 12 o'clock. Just once again, pumping the word, making sure that word is continually out there. We, we I, you know, I thank God for each and every one of you that check out uh, Live at 5 on Wednesdays and even uh, Pastor Noise Podcast at 7 o'clock on that same Wednesday. Come on, check it out because I'm telling you right now, we've got some subjects that are going to blow you away and we want you to be a part of it. So listen, thanks again for, for being a part of this, and, uh, this Bible study. And listen, make sure that you share this with your friends. Let them know that the Revelation train is still rolling. God bless you. Have an awesome Thursday.